six years ago this month in 2017, Nike announced two shoes that would change the running shoe game forever. They both featured Zumex foam and carbon fiber plates. That is the Nike Vaporfly 4% and the Vaporfly Elite. With these shoes, Nike started the super shoe race, which is still going on today with brands competing to have the best super shoe with a light bouncy foam and carbon plate. But let's kind of go back and see where it started and take a deeper look at the Vaporfly Elite. So the event that really hyped up these shoes was the Breaking 2 event. This is where Nike debuted the Vaporfly 4% and the Vaporfly Elite. The Vaporfly Elite was like their concept racing car that their fastest runners would be running in to try and break the two hour marathon barrier. They wouldn't be available to the public. However, they would be releasing kind of a watered down version of it, which we know as the Vaporfly 4%. Before we dive in even further, let's kind of fill in some more background information about the time. So around 2017, Hoka was starting to get more popular and bringing their maximalist ideas to the running scene. Their shoes had thick but decently light midsoles that were rockered to help you move easier from heel to toe. Nike jumped on the maximalism train, but instead of designing a comfortable trail shoe for running downhill in ultramarathons, they wanted something that was aerodynamic, fast, and acted more like a rocket ship. Before you saw everybody racing marathons in the Vaporfly, Nike's marathoners were wearing shoes like the Streak or Streak LT, which were typical racing flats at the time that had very little underfoot. The focus was to create the shoes as light as possible, which typically meant putting the bare minimum amount of foam underfoot. For the Breaking 2 event, Nike wanted a shoe that could still weigh similar to the traditional racing flats provide more protection, propulsion, and increase in efficiency. The results of all this experimentation ended up with the development of a new foam and the Vaporfly. So the Vaporfly 4% released at a ridiculous price point of $250, but it did debut that super light and bouncy Zumex foam and carbon plate working together. This was unique because the Zumex foam was PPAX based and that material was bouncier than most of the TPU foams available at the time, but it came in at a much, much lighter weight. This light and bouncy but unstable foam was stabilized by a full length carbon fiber plate and these two elements were found to help increase your running efficiency by 4%, hence the name Vaporfly 4%. So the Vaporfly Elite is where Nike really wanted to go with the Vaporfly, but it still had a ways to go before it was ready for the public. They're hoping that this shoe would be efficient enough to break that two hour marathon barrier. It had even more Zumex foam, about 15% more to be exact than the Vaporfly 4%, an even wilder looking pointy midsole and a fly knit upper. People didn't know it yet, but it was even more efficient than the 4%. Like I mentioned earlier, Nike wanted a shoe that was light and aerodynamic, but after testing, they found that adding more and more of the Zumex foam made the shoe more efficient. And this is how they came up with the iconic pointed heel. Nike carved and sculpted that chunk of Zumex midsole and put it in a wind tunnel. The Vaporfly Elite had the perfect mix of aerodynamics from the shape and the energy efficiency from the thick slab of foam and propulsive plate. So now that Nike had the sculpted midsole dialed in and the foam and the materials, the next thing to focus on was the upper. Early on in the press releases you saw the high top fly knit, but that was later cut down to the regular fly knit that we see here and that was carried on to the Vaporfly 4% fly knit. However, fly knit wasn't the only material that was used for the Vaporfly Elite. Nike made very few limited editions of the Vaporfly Elite that used their 3D printed upper material called fly print. It was super lightweight but also breathable and strong. Despite the new upper, this still used the same midsole as the Vaporfly Elite that we saw in 2017. So, so far at this time, Nike had two very different shoes. They had the groundbreaking Vaporfly 4% that was available to the public that everybody was trying to get their hands on, and they had the elusive kind of concept car of the Vaporfly Elite. 
but the competition was starting to gear up and try and compete with the Vaporfly 4%, so Nike knew that they needed to take it to the next level, so they essentially combined these two shoes to release the Vaporfly Elite to the wider public. In the prototyping stages, the shoe was known as the Vaporfly 5%, because of the extra percent of efficiency it gave you over the 4%. It looked very similar to the Vaporfly Elite, but with some key changes. The first was having a deeper groove under the arch, and the second was adding flex grooves and a pattern on the outsole to help increase grip. Earlier prototypes still used the Flyknit upper, but what was actually released was the water shedding vapor weave. Some samples that were made even said Nike Vaporfly 5% on them, but in the end they decided to land on the Vaporfly Next% percent as the name, since the science behind the shoe showed it could help with efficiency greater than the 4%, but not necessarily to the full 5% for everybody, so they just settled on next percent. So the Vaporfly Elite is an interesting shoe for me. It was one of the first shoes that Nike kind of led us into their shoe development process where they publicly released the shoe, but you couldn't buy it yet. It was still kind of working things out, and then later on they released it down the road. And it reminds me kind of like what car companies do with their concept cars. You know, they show off this cool groundbreaking technology early on, but it's going to be years before you actually get it. So up until Nike's latest Vaporfly, the Next% Percent 3, that just came out in some parts of the world, Nike pretty much kept the same design for five years. From that first Vaporfly Elite to the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, like I mentioned, they're just pretty similar ideas, pretty similar midsoles, just a few changes here or there. So it's nice to see that the upcoming Vaporfly 3 is going to change it up and introduce some new changes that we haven't seen in a long time in the Vaporfly. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I do plan on making more videos like this that go in depth on shoe history, taking a closer look at prototypes and just talking more about shoes and their development. Let me know if you do like these videos and want to see more of them or if there's any shoes you want me to talk about specifically. Thanks for watching and as always, keep on running.